Welcome back. This is Sunday Morning with Trevor Phillips. Yesterday, some 100,000 people marched in London to support the Palestinian cause. It passed off mainly peacefully, but police are investigating potential hate crimes and there were nine arrests. They've been called for stronger police action over conduct at protests and rising anti-Semitism. And it follows a year of devastating headlines for the country's biggest force, with officers convicted of horrific crimes, evidence of misogyny, discrimination, alongside concern about the number of young people killed in stabbings. The head of the Met, Commissioner Sir Mark Rowley, is with me now. Good morning, Sir Mark. Good morning, Sir. Now, you said that um, in order to be able to tackle some of the things we've seen on demonstrations, you need new legislation. We are hearing this morning that uh, the government is talking about a new definition of extremism. But um, Michelle Donnellan, the Secretary of State for Science, said that she thought, uh, and the government thinks, that you've got everything you need. So there's two conflicting messages. It's not for me to speak for, for, speak for government policy. We will robustly enforce up to the line of the law. Um, we're approaching 100 arrests in these events over recent weeks across dealing with local hate crime and dealing with these protests. There are many appeals out there to identify some of the people, such as, the, for example, the three women with paragliders um, mm. on their backs from, a, from last week. So Have we you have found been, out who those people are? Um, we've had some names given to us. They're definitely the wrong names, and we've refreshed our appeal on Friday. As soon as we find out who they are, they will be arrested. But so, you are pursuing those So we're being... Anybody puts their foot over the line of the law, we're going to be absolutely ruthless, and we have been, and you'll see many, many more arrests over the next week or so. Um, but we can only enforce to the line of the law. I mean, this is a particularly challenging time, an overlay of threats when you've got state threats from Iran, you've got terrorism being um, accelerated by the, by the events, um, and hate crime in communities. Um, for Jewish communities, it's now about 14-fold um, increase in anti-Semitism in London, and for Muslim communities, it's sort of nearly threefold. So this is really precarious. In the middle of it, we've got these big protests. And some of what goes on there, people do find, uh, do find it upsetting, do find distasteful. And sometimes people give an instinctive view, that must be illegal. We're working with CPS in our ops room. We're doing anything we can do as soon as we see you, some... You have a current law. prosecution lawyers in your operations room exactly. watching the demonstrations. And you talk to them about, can we nick that one or not? Yeah, so because there's no point us arresting hundreds of people if it's not prosecutable. You're just inflaming things. But there are politicians who say, you say you're being ruthless, but there are politicians who will come in here and they will say, the problem is you're not ruthless enough. Your officers are letting things go by because they're a bit worried that people are going to Nonsense. attack them for being, uh, you know, overly authoritarian and so on. Nonsense. People with political instincts um, will, um, and sort of based on their own judgment, might say that. We're working to the letter of the Lord laid down by Parliament. I think the, the piece into this morning's Telegraph, if it's accurate, um, to look at the policy and legislation around extremism, I think is really important. There have yeah. been multiple reports by um, several different people. I was involved in one a few years ago, but also by on the back of inquests. Okay. Been, so there's a lot of, so, lot of so, evidence from the last few years that so to it's be, not right. So to be clear, Michelle Donnellan said that you had spoken to the Home Secretary about all of this this week, and you have told her, we need new legislation we need greater clarity, and this morning you still would say that to her. Uh, so, I, I think there is scope to be much sharper in how we deal with extremism in this country. The law was never dealt, designed to deal with extremism. We have bodies of law to deal with terrorism, bodies of law to deal with hate crime. We don't have a body of law that deals with extremism, and that is creating a gap. Just give me, I'll give you one example. People were really upset last week about some of the actions at the yeah. protest of Hezbollah Tahrir. Um, which was one of the smaller protests last weekend. Hezbollah Tahrir are a banned organisation across most of the Muslim world. They're banned in Germany. Mm. Our counter-terrorism um, prescription powers don't allow that. So there are many examples of ways that we could be different. That's for Parliament to do. Meanwhile, I've got thousands of officers working damn hard to enforce the letter of the law. All right, so uh, you think that, to be clear, you think that you would want new legislation to make things clearer, simpler, and give your officers more certainty about what they can do. Um, and I think, I think, that's, I think the, the balance of free speech versus this is for Parliament to decide, but things that people are saying they want to enforce, we can't. It's up for them to decide whether they well, want to Well, let me, put, let me put it, uh, as you say, it's neither, not for us, either of us, to talk for ministers, but let me put something that um, Suella Braverman might say to you were she sitting here. Uh, she might say, say, on the Met's own website, you have a definition of hate crime. Let me 
remind you of what it says. It says that a hate crime is any criminal offence which is perceived by the victim or any other person to be motivated by hostility or prejudice based on a person's race or perceived race, religion or perceived religion. Now, that can include messages and pictures, and it's clear on your website. And there will be no shortage of Jewish Londoners who this morning will be saying to you, banners, chants and pictures in recent demo uh, demos are motivated by hostility based on their race or religion. Why aren't you arresting the people who yeah. carry those pictures, carry those banners and made those chants? We can go right down the rabbit hole of a technical conversation. That is about the threshold for recording an offence. That's not about the threshold for arrest or But, it, but it's, a, it's a closer but, 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 we but get it, to what a hate crime looks like. Um, it's not in the sense of what can be prosecuted, it's not. So you've picked something out of context. OK. What's going on is massively distasteful. This, and, and on, of course, it's on the back of there are thousands of innocent people who've lost their lives um, in the Middle East, not least um, uh, uh, Jews killed by the awful Hamas terrorist attack, um, but also people losing their life in, in Gaza. So in that, it, it, people are understandably upset and inflamed. I can't put myself in those shoes. Um, all I can do is but, keep repeating. We'll, we will absolutely go to the letter of law as hard as we can do. All right, let me just... But let me put it this way to you. Whatever exact letter of the law is, most people, and I think this is... I personally think this is true, that if you... that you and your officers will have applied this kind of definition to people who are offended or upset because they are black or transgender. And Jewish Londoners will be saying... I'm listening to him, and what I'm hearing is, Jews don't count. That's definitely not the case. We're arresting um, tens of people across London for anti-Semitic hate crimes. We've made arrests in relation to the protests for people stirring up hate crime. We've got many more appeals out. You'll see more arrests this week. We absolutely do care. OK, so you are doing uh, more work in relation to um, hate crime. Let me just deal with one other item on yeah. this, in this area. Um, You've had to police three separate demonstrations involving tens of thousands of people yep. in support of Palestinians, and it's all gone off, frankly, pretty well. Last Wednesday, your officers shut down a small and equally peaceful demonstration uh, organised by the campaign against anti-Semitism in support of Israel. Why? So it, it wasn't shut down. There was a, the campaign against anti-Semitism... Anti they were driving around central London with a, um, a van with some, uh, uh, some, uh, some campaigning stuff going on TV screens on the side of their van. Um, the officers were simply concerned that that driving round was going to collide with a pro-Palestinian protest, which was just wrapping up in, uh, in, uh, in, in uh, Whitehall. But, but and you, can, you can see how this would... So be. it was perceived as... It was being banned. We were asking them to avoid a collision. We weren't saying, don't drive that round, don't protest. So all the time, officers doing fine judgments, it's sort of things that aren't, aren't oh. illegal. It's never since that was illegal, saying, let's all just right. avoid a conflict. All right. Well, look, I mean, th this isn't an issue of the confidence of individual communities, but there's a bigger issue about confidence in the force by the uh, whole of, of London. We've seen the extraordinary range of uh, things that you've had to deal with. You... Um, we talked before, and yes. you've told me that uh, you're going to sack, basically, all those people who are going through, doing all this kind of thing. How many have you fired, and how many more do you expect to have to get rid of? So, um, I came back into policing after a few years out because I care deeply about it. I've got tens of thousands of fantastic officers, and as I've said many times, I've got hundreds who shouldn't be there. Um, we have uh, increased by 70% the sort of people we're um, sacking per year. Um, uh, recently released data, it was about 100 in a, 100 in a year. And, and that will keep increasing over the next year, year or two. And there's papers you can see that we took to the London Policing Board that cover that in detail. I've got to do both. I need to motivate and support the tens of thousands of brilliant officers who don't feel they've got the kit, the equipment and the training to do their job well. And at the same time, sort out the minority who are undermining the organisation. But I need to push back on some of the language. The, London's confidence in the Met is above average in terms of public's confidence in policing in the country. So um, we are at a difficult time. We've got these awful cases. And I'm operating in a paradox. The things I need to do, which is to take on these people who shouldn't be in the organisation, every one of those cases challenges, um, challenges trust. Yeah. But we're going to do it. 
Meanwhile, I've got tens of thousands of people doing amazing things to protect London. There are two groups of people who I think everybody can pretty much say uh, have some difficulty with content. One is women, Sarah Everard, yes. all of that. But also <coughs> the black community. Now, here's a tricky thing. Um, two officers were sacked this week for having lied about having smelt cannabis on yep. two black athletes, Bianca Williams and her partner. The following day, the, the public donated £50,000 to support those police officers. I suspect that the black community will feel pretty burnt by that, and it feels like you're not supported in your efforts. It's, it's, pretty, um, it's pretty unusual what's going on. The full um, verdicts of that hearing isn't out yet. Um, there's some, uh, I think, some people are confused about it because four officers said they smelt cannabis. The panel, I think, have believed two and disbelieved two others, which we, I don't yet understand the reasons for that. Um, the panel also said that there were no findings in relation to anything to do with racism in the case as well. So I think we've we, seen... So, so, we, so we see what comes out. But if, if, if officers have been dishonest, they clearly shouldn't be in the force. That's um, okay. absolutely without doubt. Let me just, if I may, um, take you on for our last minute or so to an issue that uh, doesn't hit the news very often, though, in my view, you know this, should be in the news pretty much every day. For the past decade, at least 100 young black men have died in stabbing, pretty much by mm. stabbing, pretty much every year, usually at the hands of other young black men. The reason I raised the Bianca Williams issue is that from the black community's point of view, police seem to be able to find time to arrest people because they smell of cannabis, but can't seem to stop what are basically black children still being killed on the streets of London. What's the plan to fix that? So um, the numbers are down. If I look at sort of um, stabbings, sort of our, our violence of, between young people, weaponry able violence is down. But the thing you hit upon concerns me deeply. I think because of all the tensions around race, because police and black communities don't have a great history, there's lots we've got wrong over time in that, um, we are not fronting up to this issue, which is beyond policing. In the last decade, a young black man is 13 times more likely to be murdered than a young white man growing up in London. That is a disgrace. We got so energised in COVID when potentially there was two times this proportionality about deaths of some um, black and Asian minority communities. And yet, no one is prepared to talk about this. This is about, um, it's, it needs to be about education, it's about youth services, it's, and it's partly about policing. And people are, I think, afraid to surface it. And I'm glad you say it in such frank terms. So what I'm trying to do with the black community and the meetings I have with different community groups, faith leaders um, and sort of those, those working in communities is very much, they come to me with two things. Um, there's a question about trust. We want you to do better in terms of how you stop and search our young people and we're trying to improve that. But we're really upset. We're losing too many of young people. We want, we want more policing and we want it different. And that's what we're trying to do. There's a real tension there. But they're really upset about this. But People are afraid to talk about the disproportionate death of young black men in London, and I'm great, grateful you raised it. Well, let's uh, take some time at, on another programme to talk about this. So, Mark Rowley, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Trevor. Now, in just a moment,